Ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday, the 18th of December, 2020. Thanks for hopping into the TomCast. That's not copyrighted. I'm sure someone else is using TomCast as a vehicle for their self-expression. I'm borrowing it without paying any kind of license whatsoever based on the fact that my name is Tom and I am broadcasting through the internets. Thank you, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, for making Facebook. I don't think that's acknowledged much. I don't think Zuckerberg gets a lot of thank yous these days. That's just my sense. I don't have any data about that. I think people like to vilify him. And uh, we're human, so we're going to vilify anybody who's richer than us. That's just the way things work. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to draw for you today. I'm finally motivated. It's Friday, and uh, I hope you all can get motivated before Friday at, at your week. But it's been a weird year, ladies and gentlemen. I'm grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for my buddy Mike Legrand, who commissioned the Baltimore Harbor piece that came out awesome. And I'm grateful for, I believe, a Jason Ellis who commissioned this battlefield drawing. Both drawings pushed me much, much further. So uh, with that sense of gratefulness, I'm going to share some of my method with you all today. Thanks for hopping in. We're going to get right into it. Light gray background, easy on the eyes, thinking newsprint. Let's get out our pen and let's just warm up a little bit. I'm thinking Star Wars because, I mean, when not to think about Star Wars. Star Wars is just this outstanding hero's journey uh, thought process. But come on, Mandalorian is unbelievable. Mandalorian is the best Star Wars we've ever gotten since Empire Strikes Back. And why is Empire Strikes Back so good? Because Boba Fett's in it. He's the, he's the best... In, ever best character ever in all mediums ever made why because he's a man of few words and many guns a few words many guns that's how i want to be so we're just going to warm up by drawing some shapes mass conceptions the cylinder is a shape i draw a lot why well we can use it when we're doing figure the the cylinder form is uh, essential when you're crafting the Figure. If you have any of those wooden dolls from uh, art school, I mean, you can go to Michael's, you can pick one of these up, put it on your shelf, and feel like you're a pretty cool cat. You know, you're like, oh, I'm creative, I'm artsy. Well, it's all cylinders, so if you can draw cylinders out of your head, you can pretty much draw the figure. Pretty, pretty quick, pretty straightforward, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so that's, and if you wanted to thicken this figure up, all you have to do is then add the musculature. I recommend Robert Beverly Hale's lecture on the human anatomy drawing from your mind by the Artist League of New York. I believe it's on YouTube. You probably can find it. If it's not on YouTube, you should go order it if you want to get serious about drawing anatomy. Maybe I should just do another like lightweight cliff note version of that lecture. I want to give a shout out to one of my former bosses, Brian Busati, for turning that turning me on to that lecture series. Uh, I should, well, wish that was a lecture I saw while I was in college. Instead, I saw it when I was a young artist at Firaxis back in the 2000s and uh, 2010s, teens. What do we call that? What do we call that era of time? The last decade. What should we refer to as? The 2010s? The 20-teens? The 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 after the 20 aughts, the noughties, I don't know what you want to call it. Someone educate me. Someone educate me. Feel free to say hello and text. Let me know if you are here. Facebook's got a whole bunch of new features, and this video will be on YouTube later. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, dude. All right, so just kind of warming up. This is pretty stupid. Let's uh, do another drawing. Let's blank this all out. I'm going to sample that background color and start a new one. So what do I want to showcase today? Um, just drawing drawing some kind of character out of your head is what I love to do, so why not? Why not do more of that? Just move the whole Cintiq. Sorry, I shook the earth a little bit. I'm thinking about Star Wars characters, like I said. Uh, we love Mando. 
Mando's got this cool helmet that reminds us of, if you're a history buff, the Spartans. It also kind of looks like Battlestar Galactica. I'm sure uh, that inspiration kind of comes from the same uh, spot. We get. It's interesting that all these little details that some artists just made up. Uh, I should know the name of this artist, but the artist that made up the character of Boba Fett from the original uh, series just kind of added a bunch of greeble and details to a character and it turned out that they were so good that the design of the details were so good that other artists and creatives and writers could take those details and come up with explanations for how that works that's something about the star wars and star trek universes that is really exciting is all the fan imagination for how this fantasy could possibly work. And maybe that's the important thing about science fiction and fantasy. Well, I never got into fantasy as much as sci-fi. Sci-fi being something in the future um, presents this idea or of a, a question. And that question is, how does this work? And sometimes by answering that question, you discover a path to a better world. If something gets invented and it becomes a, a better uh, solution to what we're doing. So some of these kinds of patterns are just iconic. I mean, the T-shaped, I mean, all you need to do is see that and you know it's a Mandalorian now. If you're a fan of Star Wars, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, this T-shape over the eyes is... Like a primal, I mean, like the T-shape with the helmet is very recognizable for very uh, pr primal defensive reasons. And I can only, I, maybe something that happened during the time of Alexander the Great that impressed that image into all of us. I mean, you have knight's helms from the Middle Ages that do this kind of thing. You have uh, the, the Greek helmets from antiquity that do this kind of thing the cheek protection and uh, the, the holes for the eyes the greek helmets looked something like this and sometimes had some like the like the trojans i suppose they had some kind of hair thing on the top uh pretty cool something like that that's fun uh, what else what else do we have that kind of resembles um this shape i mean maximilian i think is a is a robot i love from science fiction i think he had something like this kind of shape for his eyes but this this t-shape is really good when we're drawing heads in general when you're drawing a face and you have a ball and you need to do let's say i want to draw a face off of this ball i don't know which way to go well just imagine drawing a t somewhere on the contour so just like a basketball like imagine this is a basketball if we're looking at it straight on we have the cross i you know i didn't play basketball so i don't i think it's something like this there's a couple u's is that right for my for my ballers out there is that what it's like well imagine if we just took that on a turn a little bit and Let's let's imagine these the the crosshair kind of line being a contour like that, right? So now we have a point, we have a vector where that intersection point is. So like in this this point of view here, this is that vector point is looking right at us. That might be like the fill hole where you have to like pump the the ball up. So imagine turning it just a few degrees here. And then that contour is going to look something like this. And then the vector is the direction off the surface. We call it the normal sometime. Drew Harris here. What's up, dog? He says, Tom, looks right. Thanks, man. Dude, I want to see you dunk someday. Can we, can we arrange that? If you need a trampoline, I might be able to provide one. Just for the video. I think that would be dope. Can we get Dustin to make you a trampoline so you can dunk? I'm not saying you can't dump dunk unassisted. I just think it would be fun. I just think it would be fun. Do a front flip. What's up, my man? What are you drinking in your coffee cup today? I had some Wegmans Columbia, Colombian coffee, and it was all right. 
it was all right. I did it in the, did just did a pour over at my house. So why, why are we starting out with the Mandalorian Boba Fett kind of character? Because why not? Also, drawing faces is hard. So uh, masks and helmets are a little easier to draw for that. So we got our boy here. He's looking real good. He's looking real good. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Spoilers. So ladies and gentlemen, I feel like listening to podcasts has informed me on how to talk. Uh, for all you out there who are like, why do you watch so many podcasts, Tom? I was like, well, I need to learn how to talk because I was a latchkey kid. And I was by myself for most of my adult, excuse me, most of my life in general, not talking to people, mostly talking to my Legos and my stuffed animals. So uh, podcasting, especially listening to Bill, old Billy Burr and uh, Rogan is teaching me how to conversate like a human freaking being. All right, here we go. We got the we got the boba dude. He's got the little Fet Clan uh, leaf thing. I think I for, he's got his uh, pa, uh, he's got some what are they called the, the scalps? He's got some like scalps hanging off of him. He's got his uh, cape kind of kind of dingy. He's got his Beskar armor painted green. I think he's got some kind of like battle damage. And then there's the the Mandalorian um, monster Credo th marking thing on his pauldron. Boom. And uh, dude's always got his trusty, trusty space weapon. I don't know what that is. Something like, something like that. Boom. All right. He's got some kind of weapon gear thing. I don't think he's, does he have flying, does he have whistling birds on his left or right arm? I don't, he's got a flamethrower. He's got a, uh, some kind of grappling hook business on his gauntlets uh, something something like that rest in peace jeremy bullock i think is the guy who who acted at uh the boba fett in the original trilogy rest in peace dog thanks for being a badass thanks for being a dude yeah okay so that's kind of fun let's just to warm warm it up with some boba and what are, what are some cool things about the visual language of Boba Fett that we can key in on? Well, very clear armor, but also armor that represents some of the idyllic, idyllic forms of the human being. I mean, clearly it's like left and right pectoral muscles, the deltoids, uh, the abdominal muscles... Like, the armor is accentuating the features of the human body, which is something the Greeks were really into, too. When you look at Greek armor, uh, such as the um, the Greek, the Greco helmet, let's do a little, like, a light figure here. Uh, what, do, what do we see in a, in a Greco-Roman um, plate curious kind of thing? It's just... Draw a figure underneath, deltoids, biceps, triceps, forearms, something like that. Okay, we have this front and back plate usually. And depending on what vintage you're in, be it Greek or Roman, there are, are or aren't shoulder uh, protections. There might be some kind of cloth. Later on, you would have the lorica segmentata, which has this kind of arrayed metal plate pattern and that accentuates and also I mean not only does it protect the shoulders but it um, you know accentuates that form and figure what does Drew say Drew says I'm down I can't talk without assistance lol regular old Folgers with French vanilla creamer nothing wrong with Folgers I learned a couple weeks ago that if you just run Folgers through a good coffee maker it's decent especially a percolator do you use a percolator all right so we got that got the helmet thing and Tilly's. What are some more Greek, Greek heroes? And Tilly's? Wedge and Tilly's? Achilles. I'm getting a Star Wars in the Greek thing. Yeah, what? And it's Wedge and Tilly's is the fighter pilot. I think he flies X-Wings. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that is a tiny X-Wing. The X-Wing is a very phallic aircraft, spacecraft, and I'm okay with that. I mean, it's got a fuck... It's, sorry, I'm going to curse. It's it's extremely phallic, and I'm okay with it, just to repeat myself. 
but we love it. Uh, Wedge and Tilly's flies X wings, and Achilles has a heel. I believe is how that works. That's a fun Brad Pitt movie. If you want to watch Troy, uh, I don't. That's one of those movies that ages better than it is when it's fresh. Like Orlando Bloom is super young in it. Everyone looks really fit. Is it Eric Bana who's the the Trojan guy? Um, yeah, it, it looks pretty good today, and I think that's more of a testament to how bad movie has movie making has gotten. Like the amount of just overwhelming CG in films now. It, like, dude, go back in time and watch Waterworld, which your brothers like. Drew, um, they love Waterworld. I learned that learned in the podcast, and and I watched a clip of it, and I realized like, man, this movie looks good. It got banned when it come out, but you can watch it now, and it's probably decent. I think modern cinema has gotten really bad and overly fan servicey. What do you think, Drew? Drew got a camping perk, but I don't use it because I have a full camping coffee maker. Got it. Camping percolator. Got it. Cool, dude. Thanks for hanging out, man. Glad you are here. Uh, my buddies are who usually hang out. Uh, besides you are uh, doing some moving today and I might join them later. I just needed to wake up before doing anything uh, along those lines. So language of Star Wars armor, usually something accentuating the form. If you go back to the Clone Wars, I think like the I don't the Jedi armor that Obi-Wan and Anakin wear like accentuates the upper, upper thoracic area and still having their you know it's it's really hard for me to watch the clone wars i want to watch it because i know the story is important in the cartoon for prefacing and explaining what's going on in the new expanded star wars universe particularly the mandalorian a lot of reoccurring characters in the mandalorian from the original clone wars don't want to spoil too much but if you're watching you'll know what i'm talking about Drew says, I'm a bad movie critic. I just like most things as long as it's just a little entertaining. A little entertaining. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think I'm transitioning from being a lover of movies to now a lover of music. It's, it's, muse, most of my life, movies were up here and music was like down here. And as I'm getting older, it's starting to shift a little bit. And I think it's because of reality. I think I'm realizing that Hollywood has been lying to me about what reality is for 37 years. And music is closer to the truth, at least the individual perceived truth. And that's what I'm kind of into. Drew says Clone Wars was good cartoon. I agree. Um, good, not great. I mean, I think, I think the rendering style is a little off-putting and the animation itself is kind of amateurish at times but they, they had to do a lot of content so you know you get you get seven seasons of clone wars with disney plus that's a lot of content for 12.99 a month if you if you're going to watch through that i just bought some disney stock uh, i was definitely late to the party i should have bought it when i told my sister to buy it back at 100 now it's like 175 something like that See, here I'm combining the Jedi stuff. I forgot what I was doing, so I'm combining the Jedi stuff with Boba, with uh, the Mandalorian um, stuff. Yeah, I think the Jedi stuff was like this draped... Very little protection over the midsection for uh, Mr. Obi Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan uh, mentor, general guy. Looking all serious, all Ewan McGregor style. Dude, I would love a Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan series. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. I wonder if Fett and Obi-Wan crossed paths uh, at all on Tatooine. They must have. They must have. They must have known about each other. Must have known about each other. I, I would bet that Fett would steer clear of the Jedi after... Then again, he wasn't defeated by the Jedi. He went into the Sarlacc pit because Solo hit him with a stick. Because Solo's lucky. Yeah, anyway. Whatever. Let's let's get into something else. Let's get into something else. This was fun. Let's go to a new thing. Let's do a new thing here. 
Star Wars. Got those like stupid speeder cars stuck in my head. Like no one flies or drives around and <laughs> I wonder if like someone from the Star Wars universe like came to the the US today and was like cars with wheels and enclosed air conditioning heating. This is so luxurious. We've just been sitting in open cockpit rocket vehicles going 400 miles an hour and we just thought it was okay to be miserable with uh the wind blowing into your face all the it's so weird it's so weird maybe they got like really good heating you know if you got enough power to float a four ton craft you probably have power to like blast all the air conditioning and all of the heating you know for climate con climate control just climate domination is what kind of power you have Drew says, you really need to listen to your own investing advice. Lol, just started investing myself. Any hot tips? Uh, energy's coming back big time. I mean, Exxon was like $60 before before this whole shindig went down, and now it's still in the 40s. I think that's still a buy. It's going to go back to 60 eventually. Um, I, I bet on rig, which is Transocean, when it was like $1.80. It went down to seventy cents. I picked up more of it. And now it's at two fifty. So if I just bought more at seventy cents, I probably would have doubled my money. But it was at the risk of being delisted. I completely missed. I completely missed the Tesla train, Drew. I did not think Tesla would go up six hundred percent in COVID year. This, what's going on with Tesla is just bananas. My brother, who's a actually a professional at this stuff, a full career. Ivy League economics dude is like the, the market is completely detached from fundamentals and has been since April right like the downturn made sense the economy was shutting down but otherwise like this huge what happened was you had all these gamblers come into the market you had everyone who was sports betting which is probably like 20 million dollars a year go into the market and go heavy tesla they're just like tesla's freaking awesome because what do gamblers like but gold guns jewels and fame and stuff and so it's like this like you basically had a million gangsters entering wall street who had no business being there but they realized wait a second i can make more money here more consistently than at any casino i've ever been a part of so now fundamentally like the market's changed. The, the market's completely changed, and Amazon is taking over everything. That's my thoughts on it right now. Uh, I think if you want to, I think the best stock market tips are probably from some 19-year-old kid on a college campus right now. Like, go to a university, talk to 50 19-year-old sophomores, see what they're buying right now, and invest in whatever brand that is. Is it Nike? Is it Lululemon? Is it you know, Bose headphones, is it Beats? Like, whatever 19-year-old wealthy kids are buying, that's what you should get stock in. And then dump it in 5 to 10 years. Or, like, make your money and then take half of your winnings and invest it in something more stable, like a VOO, like a Vanguard index fund or something. Okay, that's Tom's Tom's stock, stock tips segment. All right. New drawing. Let's go back to faces. Some kind of Star Wars y guy. Kind of some kind of Star Wars y dude. So uh, I'm not interested in drawing aliens right now because uh, aliens are fun, but I want to get into the human form stuff. Like that Mandalorian helmet thing accentuates like the hollow cheeks of some kind of fighter, some kind of warrior who is living on the edge of survivability, who is just tough and made of bone and sinew and just a little bit of muscle to protect the the sensitive bits so thinking star warsy kind of character uh maybe a little bit of gorillas happening here let's start with a face because the face can illuminate a lot of expression so i don't usually th i'm not thinking consciously about my mark making i'm thinking about a feeling or an emotion or a toughness and then uh, my arm is like connecting with the canvas and just making marks 
and then my mind is seeing these these images kind of emerge from the mess from the primordial ooze of the early stage of the drawing so uh star warsy kind of stuff he's got something kind of hanging out of his mouth maybe it's a cigarette maybe it's a pipe maybe it's just a, a bit of straw maybe it's some alien kind of kind of drug thing let's give him a really sharp chin uh, so put the ears in a in a difficult way we imagine drawing a line from the edge of the eye and that's the the top inset point of the upper part of the ear and then uh, the bottom of the nose comes back and that's kind of the inset point of the bottom of the earlobe down there and then we have a little squiggly bit and then we have this roundy bit and then we have uh, a bit like that something like that something like that Okay, got to get the cranium part, the back of the head where the brain pan is. Let's do some erasing. Boom. All right. Cool. Let's give him something to stay warm with. It's cold out right now. I'm protecting my neck with some wool. And I think this character being a deep space uh, pilot, pirate, smuggler, explorer guy would also as well protect his neck. And why not have some kind of detachable hood? for fun. So we got a little clip in bit right here and it's uh, going to be some kind of hooded apparatus, maybe garment that he can like clip in, clip out and uh, maybe just put some buttons, some functionality for how this thing would work. And it's it's kind of cape-like, it's kind of adorning. I mean, these, these characters out in outer space are, are real gangsters and they want to look intimidating, they want to look tough and they also want to show off their wealth that's something kind of cool in the mandalorian show as it explains this narrative about beskar which is this super rare super valuable metal that is very strong uh, i'm not going to get into the details for the sake of, of of keeping the spoilers uh, so they're wearing their wealth what's that like in real history well there were these famous mercenaries back in the Middle Ages in the pre-Renaissance Renaissance called the Landsknecht, which were these German uh, mercenaries who wore lavish, extravagant uniforms and costume. And part of it was to show off their wealth. They would take all these materials, they'd take their money, they would buy crazy weapons like these doppel swords, these really huge two-handed zigzag bladed weapons to look intimidating and scary. And they were just bamps. They were crazy, like it was like the fort the 15th century version of a hair rocker were these lands connected guys. Let's let's let me show it. I learned about them while working on Sid Meier's civilization. Lands connected. I learned about them from Mark Hudgens. Want to give him some props. Look at these ridiculous mofos. They're crazy. Crazy looking. But they're baller. They're gangster. They're wearing all their clothes with this slash and poof kind of cut. They wanted to look fancy. And then they also had their armor on top of it. Sometimes the armor was adorned or detailed up or etched, acid etched or um, meticulously decorated because they, they wanted to be ballers. This is some concept art somebody did and uh, I like it. I might learn about who drew this later because that's pretty cool. However, back in the time, it's nice to think about ladies being Lance Kinesh's. In reality, that did not happen. If it did, it was probably one in a million. So, most of the time, it was dudes wearing fancy outfits, killing people in Eastern Europe. Let's go. Let's go. How y'all doing? 30 minutes in. Thanks for hanging out today. Let's keep drawing this guy. Let's keep drawing this character here. So, let's uh, just quickly estimate out a chest piece. This is looking pretty big. His rib cage would actually be about this big, proportionally collarbone to shoulder to let's go shoulder down here let's keep that a little bit more level what am i thinking about this guy he's looking real sinister right now real sinister okay so he's got this thing coming out of his mouth and then the shoulder comes down um the, the bigger chest piece reminds me of rogue one a star wars story that character that 
Forrest Whitaker plays with the big like armor. He's almost wearing some kind of life support system. It's like he's living in an iron lung. That's what it kind of reminds me of. So maybe this guy's got uh, some kind of piping coming in because he needs help uh, breathing. That'd be interesting. So he's got a little O2 oxygen tank on his back. Uh, let's let's give him some kind of polite chest uh, apparatus, and then there's attachments points that would come underneath and over, like modern body armor. That'd be interesting. Okay, shoulder. Okay, let's uh, keep developing him. So this is an interesting start. This is just a brainstorm sketch. I like to do a few sketches to come up with a really good idea. So we'll. We'll copy this, hide this layer, maybe we'll come back to it. New layer, paste it, paste it a little bit smaller. Because we're, what we're doing right now is we're just developing an idea. We're just, we're, we're investigating an idea of a character. Let's continue on. So if he is, his shoulder's up, this shoulder's up, let's put this hip down, that's contrapasta. All right, core, that's the front. This is the vector of his belly button. There was an interesting character in the episode one, season two, sorry, what was it, episode nine? I guess season two, the first episode, where you had a very skinny lawman character that showed up. And I kind of like the idea of this kind of awkward lawman type dude. We'll just investigate it first, and then we'll try something else later. So this is up, so that leg will be the longest leg, and then this one will be a little bit um, bent to match knee vector that way knee vector this way that's the cylinder we're talking about and feet just gonna quickly quickly rough in something and then decide later if we like it or not it's just important to do to see something okay Okay, how do I feel about this character? Let's get some gray, some darkening gray. We'll go fit, eh, fit 50 percent, some warm gray, and just fill it in so we have a silhouette that we can see. We have upper body, we have the head. So lines are nice, but silhouette hits us visually in a different area. And sometimes that silhouette is more important, especially with video games. When you want to recognize a bad guy from far, far away, you, the designer of the game should think about a clear silhouette. Think Moby Franks drawings from Team Fortress 2. Team Fort 2. I think Team Fort 2 was a breakthrough game in the history of video games because it established a stylized but high resolution style that a lot of games have mimicked since. But Team Fortress 2 was also a culmination of lessons that Valve and game developers have learned from the previous 30 years. So I think I think about Valve being at the these key milestones in the game industry coincide with or can be marked by things that Valve has done. You have Half-Life 1, then Counter-Strike, which wasn't Valve initially, but it was a modification of a Valve game. In the digital distribution with Steam, Half-Life 2, Team Fort, and now Half-Life Alex is like the definitive and possibly killer app for VR. I mean, Beats, Beat Saber and I think Half-Life Alex are like the main experiences, reasons for getting VR headset. Certainly, I mean, Valve's all about setting the bar. That's a joke with the crowbar that Gordon Freeman uses in that game. They set the bar, and Half-Life Alex is a bar that's set so high in terms of quality. I don't think anyone else in the industry is going to be coming even close. Like, we just, no one else can spend the kind of money and time that Valve did to do that. What's up? Thanks for hanging out. Everybody say hi. Let me know you're here. If anyone else is watching, if it's just the Tom and Drew show, the show, then that's cool. I'm down with that. Let's keep going. All right, so we have this idea of a character. Let's do a, a basic, let's do a different angle on this same guy to see if it's interesting. 
So let's turn it around. We've got, got our head. Maybe he's doing a little bit more portrait. Let's do a, a pose that's uh, maybe a little bit more belly forward for fun. And then maybe some, some holding of gear, kind of swashbuckler, gunslinger type pose. So here I'm thinking about silhouette a little bit more than line. something interesting I can do. I want to make the legs a little bit more interesting. Boba's got these knee pads that are pretty good. Do I want to have some kind of little like knee pad thing that this character has like a like a fet type? We could experiment with it. We can certainly experiment with it. Let's go a little bit stronger. Let's go up to 100% so I can make clearer marks. These little T-shaped knee pad things that Boba has, I think, are pretty cool. Boba's also got some baller pants. He's got these, like, really big thigh pockets that I think are probably actually really practical. I would love to know from actors who have portrayed Boba if those pants are, in fact, uh, good or uncomfortable and bad. But it, nothing says space pilot like having some big old cargo pants, right? But also kind of fitted and also with a stripe along the side. And why not have some kind of pistol up there too? So this is feeling Star Wars-y just by having some crazy pockets on those pants. Because you don't see those kind of, you don't see pockets like that on the upper thigh. Other than like modern cry position. Like finally some company came out and made pants like that they're called cry precision they're out of brooklyn and the pockets aren't even that big the pockets are actually smaller but they're in that spot the accessible spot when you're sitting down in a uh, in a car or something by the way by the way i have a complaint about my new phone this is a decently sized phone this is the motorola power i just got it's an older phone but for me it's brand new and it has a huge battery life and i love it but it's very slippery. I need to get a case for it. And it falls out of my pockets a lot. Uh, so we need some better pants, ladies and gentlemen, that can hold cell phones better. Maybe some elastic at the top. Maybe some elastic inside of the pant. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Okay, this is kind of fun. I'm liking this pose. I'm, I'm starting to dig this kind of silhouette. Maybe he's got like a sweater type garment and then some shoulder apparatus type thing now for for recognizability asymmet asymmetry is something used in the Star Wars universe extensively for for showcasing uniqueness like some kind of one-sided kind of adornment you see that with like the the stormtrooper kind of characters and that's that's in the military as well the one-sided nature of or, or asymmetrical uh thing like i forget what these are these are called cords like there's a we use cords in military adornment for different things now, practically, cords would get caught on stuff, but in Star Wars, there's a, there's less concern about practicality because I think we imagine that there's enough technology to make up for any loss in practicality because of style decisions. But then again, it is a very practical universe. It seems practical. Not aerodynamic, but 
practical if you get that. The equipment belt seems like a big deal in the Star Wars universe too. I would guess because that's where people hold their money. It seems like the money in the world are these little metal metallic uh, square pieces. I imagine that they would fill up a pocket pretty quick. So having some kind of money bag, some money pouch might be valuable. It's probably because it's a really wild west kind of place and precious metals are an actual viable commodity there because people can melt them down, 3D print, make, uh, make something. Solo had these big jackets or I shouldn't say big jacket, big pockets on his jackets. What does that look like? Do we want pockets up there? Nah, I think we, we want to stick with this like human lung type thing. Helps him breathe, helps him, uh, I don't know, vent some damaged, damaged lung type type stuff. Bald? Do we like bald? I might keep him bald for now. You can think about a helmet or a hairstyle later. Okay, what do we think about this? This is kind of fun. This is getting somewhere. This is getting somewhere. I like that foot. Let's um, give it some more English. All right, so this is starting to feel uh, pretty, pretty darn Star Warsy, and I'm cool with that. He's got some kind of kangaroo pocket, maybe like a hand warmer thing here. That might be fun. Some kind of useful business. These are just this is an accidental like sketch line here, but I kind of like that this shape. This is an accident, but I like it. So we're gonna go with it. We're gonna just gonna run, run with that. Let's get some white. Let's paint some. Maybe he inherited some Stormtrooper armor. Why isn't this lighter? Am I still on a Razor tool? I am still on a Razor tool. Let's go to the brush tool. B. Alright, now I'm feeling it, ladies and gentlemen. The caffeine is wearing down and I'm settling in to the drawing part. I'm settling in. Alright. So he's got the boba pants, he's got the boba knee things, so maybe he's like a former Mando who lost, you know, he took his helmet off for a girl, she broke his heart, and then he stopped eating for a while. I think that's uh, the narrative of this guy. Maybe he had a run-in with, you know, he thought about going Imperial for a hot minute, did some work for them, didn't like uh, where that was going, didn't like their, their savagery. And decided to go uh, rebel for a little bit. Didn't like that. Then worked with Pike for a little bit. Thought Maul was a bit creepy. Too many tattoos. And decided to just uh, smuggle for a children's hospital. That's when. You know, that's what he does now. He's he's moving. He's moving very dangerous, very expensive medicines for Saint Jews of outer space. Saint Jude's not Jews. I mumbled a little bit. Saint Jude. Hey, Drew. Drew says, needs to be somewhat slick so you're not always pulling your pocket out. I see what you're saying. It's easy to pull the whole pocket. Well, then there should be some stitching on the inside to hold the bottom of the pocket in the pant, right? I think there's a way to solve this problem. Need a little bit of retention. Need a little bit. That's cool. Something like that. Maybe this is going down because he's just a little upset about his situation. Okay, let's. I'm dig. I'm digging this, but we should do one more. See how the the idea evolves. Like, you can make a shitty drawing that just gets your ideas on paper, and then you can riff off of it. Let's do another drawing because we're warming up. We're getting stronger here. Let's move one more over to the right, and maybe we'll do a back view. Uh, three quarter reverse neck shoulder blade shoulder blade back the trapezius muscle group up here uh, lats trapezius lats uh, dominus 
stuff. Dorsi? No. What are, what are these called on the side? Serratus? The serratus muscles? Something like that. Latin. Latin for the win. What should his arms be doing? Can he be holding something? Maybe he's pondering something. Maybe he's just, uh, he's holding a lit cigarette. Maybe he's holding, holding a thing. I don't know what he's holding. Some kind of device. Some kind of microchipped e device. Uh, he's got some kind of headset thing. Backpacks got an O2 tank. And then maybe it's just a series of straps and stuff, just some medical equipment and like basic uh, necessities, like survival equipment. He's got a pipe there. He's probably got like a backup pipe in the case that pipe gets ruptured. He's probably got a spare pipe. Got a, probably got a spare like mini tank. Um, back in there somewhere, some kind of strap that holds this in place and it screws down to that area. And then like a cable to some kind of device that he can just quickly check and see what his levels are. That'd be cool. Yeah, I would like something like that. Maybe right, right here where I can look down and look at what my O2 level is. That'd be cool. Let's finish the rest of this. Uh... We don't want to look into proton pack. More like lightweight, practical, not something that competes with a big Mandalorian jump pack or a photon pack like I said from Ghostbusters. Let me feel about this. I'm going too big again. Let's shrink it down using the lasso tool and then transform control T. So control L get the lasso. Lasso what you want. Control T and get the transform out. Shrink it down. Thanks, Drew. What are you up to this weekend? Doing anything fun? Might be photographing a wedding, a very small wedding. Like eight people, COVID style tomorrow. How do we feel about this? How do we feel about it? Not thrilled about it. This this is looking very wrong. Uh, let's redraw that. Doesn't quite feel right. How does this feel? Sometimes, especially for artists that are learning to draw, it's really good to get a camera, a tripod, and set it to record video and then pose, and then look at that video later and pause it on a frame that you like the pose the best. So act out, whatever, get some props, get some cardboard tubes, make some prop weapons or prop shields or equipment or something like that pose out stuff and then draw over yourself that's a really good way to learn i think we'll do just an hour today we got about 12 more minutes left in this time let's see so far we got some likes drew liked it of course deb liked it the letter b liked it thanks 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 hope you guys are having a good day and what's the other arm doing? Maybe we'll do some kind of Sid Mead style hand on the hip. Something like that. Looking heroic. Giving the hand something to do. Got the shoulder pauldron. That's going to be off the shoulder a little bit. Plenty of flexibility. We're just worried about taking glancing side shots. Not really worried about stuff from the top. Uh, right now. Oh, we wanted a hood on this guy too, didn't we? So let's illuminate that hood just a little bit. It's coming over the back. It's some detachable thing. It's kind of got a bunch of folds on it. Something like that. Saw Guerrera. That's his name. Saw Guerrera is the character from Rogue One. 
the Star Wars story. And I think he has some kind of gas mask that he could like unclip, take a breath, and put over there. Maybe we'll just give this guy a little bit like a pocket for similar kind of apparatus. On the other side, maybe a little like line that comes underneath. So this... What is going on? Am I in like a grayscale mode? It's very possible I'm in grayscale mode because I'm not seeing any color. Mode is grayscale. There we go. Let's go to RGB. Um, changing mode can affect the appearance of layers. Flatten image before flatten. No, don't flatten. All right, does this work now? Yeah, that works. Interesting. That's uh, something that rarely happens, but it does occasionally. All right, so that's just the, like, the line work. Just getting a couple wires. Marking where these wires would be. Something like that. It's kind of cool. And that, and that gives him this asymmetric, just this little bit of asymmetry right here, suddenly gives him some identity. Some unique identity. So just a little bit of red for his uh, life support system equipment. Life support and armor uh, system. It sounds pretty good. So let's silhouette silhouettifies this drawing pocket. Let's go 40%. All right, Drew, audience participation time. What should this character's Star Wars name be? some light. Color mode just to put some quick skin tone on what this guy's got going on. This guy's sleeves maybe slightly rolled up a little bit, slightly rolled up. Cool. Now we're we're really we're cooking with gas. Now we're we're developing this idea for this character. Something like that. Let's go green and blue for that tank. It's to show it's, it's really life support. It's not a weapon. It's more of a life support kind of system. So even though there's red lines going into it, those red lines symbolize blood veins, I think. So we're, we're going deep on the, the symbolism uh, business right here. He's got a little bit of armor up top because he's got to protect his vitals. But his head isn't covered. Why? Because maybe he's crazy. Maybe we should invent a helmet that he wears. Would that be cool? Let's invent some kind of helmet based on some Star Wars-y stuff. So... Uh, Thinking asymmetry, thinking, thinking, there was a really cool character from one of the Star Wars games that had this asymmetric uh, eyepiece thing, and that might be kind of cool. Uh, maybe it's got some kind of optic bit there. That would be kind of interesting. Like one of the things the Mandalorian, well, something that's not explained in that question of how does this work in Mando is how does he get predator vision with his visor? Where is the optics for that? Where is the actual sensor? Is it just integrated in? Is it so futuristic it's integrated in the very polymer or transparent material of the helmet itself? Or are there tiny little like little dot cameras that we can't see, you know, arrayed somewhere on there? Um, if you look at what modern optics look like, night vision and uh, 
LIDAR and stuff like that. There's all these very obvious sensors that have apertures on them to let in light thermal energy or emit lasers, receive lasers, or some kind of radar system that is emitting a radio wave and then a receiver. You have the emitter and receiver, and you have to see these things. Helmet in the hood, Drew suggests. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Drew says something Latin meaning skinny or sunken face-like, or something that says he's been through it all. Hmm. My Spanish is non-existent, so if you have any suggestions in the Spanish, what's the Spanish word for skinny? Uh, flaca, or flaco. Ha! <laughs> Joe Flacco. Eh, how funny is that? Flacco. Flacco. Oh, that's his name now. He is Flacco. That seems just perfect, doesn't it? <laughs> Joe, Joe Flacco. Well, um... It's kind of obvious, so I think we should we should Star Wars Vanessa. Is it maybe something uh, looking like uh, Flacco? Uh, you know, we're gonna mix. <laughs> I don't like the I don't like the P H L. That that looks weird. P H L looks like some kind of thing you put in front of a doctor. Winter through. I don't have a fluke. Does FL look better? Flick, flick, how flow, 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 co. We'll, we'll keep noodling on that. Words are not my strong suit, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, drawing is my strong suit, ladies and gentlemen. So he's got some kind of asymmetric helmet thing. We could like reach back, grab face mask type helmet business. Kind of apparatus. Let's do the face again. Nose, eyeballs, brow. Drawing. Okay, so coming over this, let's go orange just to illustrate. So, space pilot. I'm thinking like a couple like light sensors, some kind of optic thing that's like coming out of the side of his cheek. And then like a asymmetric bigger lens on one side so we can look down and see his uh, controlling, like his, his O2 level apparatus. Uh, some kind of, you know, respirator bu business. He's got this huge chin. auditory stuff. Can we do something different than like a typical ear cup? Rebel helmets are really big. The, the fighter pilot helmets are huge both in the real world and in the Star Wars universe. I don't think I want something that big. Maybe it's just like a mask shield and then just a covering. So we have hard, we have like plate here. We have some kind of plate here. 
and then a plate here. This is looking like Star Lord a little bit actually, with that. But this is different, which is cool. I don't I don't think I've seen something quite like this with uh, two distinct kind of probe probe shapes. Ooh, this is just an accident, but I like it. And then very Star Wars-y, uh, great system. Looks like you stole it off of a Stormtrooper. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Feeling this, ladies and gentlemen. Feeling this a lot. This is fun, Drew. Having a good time. Hope you're having a good time watching. All right, so we have this piece, and then maybe it fastens along there. Uh, some kind of push button, and then this whole thing can, like, hinge... Uh, maybe it's like a hinge from the back, or or hinge up maybe, maybe hinge. I don't know. I where that hinge would be. And then this is just a bump area. This is like soft tanker helmet kind of material that can keep him warm and protect him against things and bumps. But he doesn't want all that weight on top of his head. And so then there's like some kind of counterweight in the back to uh, hold on to it. So maybe this maybe this is like an under helmet for something that would be much heavier. And maybe later he can like when he's when he's actually in outer space he can put the cap uh, the 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 armor cap part on top. But maybe it's damaged. Maybe he doesn't wear it all the time. Something like that. Let's uh, just kind of render the rest of this guy just a little bit here. This is feeling pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. I'm kind of digging this. Kind of digging it. All right. Something like that feels pretty good. Let's get a couple more highlights. And uh, this is going to be like a brown, brown orangish. Looks kind of like dreads, doesn't it? Something about that orange makes it feel real 70s. And you got to remember, like, all the Star Wars fashion is 70s. Because that's when they made the movie, in the 70s. So you got oranges and desaturated primary colors. Like, desaturated yellows, desaturated greens and reds and stuff. And then orange. Like, bright orange. Just like that shag carpeting in that 1976 Gremlin in bright tang orange not an s a c flacour flacour set uh, i like that drew that's that's the great freaking star wars name flacour set yeah that's uh I'm gonna give you credit on that. That that's uh, that's a legit Star Wars name, dog. <laughs> well done, well done. And then we'll just kind of, you know, and then it would be in, it wouldn't be in English. It'd be in some kind of Star Warsy language. And Star Star Wars language looks weird. Like it's um, it's uh, I, I don't even freaking know how to. Do it. It's um, I don't know, something like that. It's just weird geometric symbols. Their alphabets all messed up. It ain't English. It is not English. One of my favorite moments in a novel was in Michael Crichton's Sphere, and the story goes: current day, current Earth, out in the Pacific Ocean. There, uh, a trawler that's carrying fiber optic line across the Pacific to draw fiber optic, you know, connectivity between the U.S. and say Australia hits a snag, hits a snag somewhere in the middle of the Pacific, and divers go down and see that it's a giant fin, like a huge five-story tall metallic arrow fin and they're like what that that looks like from an airplane 
And then they dig a little deeper and they, they see this coral layer. And then below the, there's like four feet of coral, which takes a certain amount of thousands of years to grow. So they can figure out by the depth of the coral how old this airplane is. And nothing makes sense because there's an airplane wing and then thousands of years of coral. Well, clearly there's no airplanes on the United, on the world 4,000 years ago. Flight's only 120 years old. And then they're like digging, 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 and then they find like what looks to be like a hatch. And they're like, oh my god, this is an alien. This has to be some kind of alien spaceship. And they're underwater, and they're underwater tanks. And there's a whole like massive DOD uh, operation under the sea, kind of like the abyss, you know, from other... James Cameron, which also is a Michael, is that also a Michael Crichton movie? I don't know, something like that. What's up, Devin? Welcome to the show. Your brother came up with an awesome Star Wars name for this guy. Flecour Set. Set is a very Egyptian kind of name, too. It sounds like, isn't Set the name of one of the gods? Anyway, in Sphere, this, was, this, this moment gave me goosebumps. They find the hatch, and then they carve open the hatch and the the first explorer is at the hatch see there is a panel and there's colors there's like red blue and yellow and the researchers are like oh my god this these aliens who made this ship see in the same wavelength we do they have the same primary colors we do amazing they must be a lot like us this is well not only is it an incredible discovery because there's an, there's an alien spacecraft thousands of feet underwater, thousands of years old. But they're like, they're, they see in the same colors we do. We probably can figure out a way to communicate with them. And then they open this panel up and it says like, to release, turn handle to right. It's in English. It's in English. It's in contemporary English. This thing that's buried 4,000, you know, years, 2,000 feet deep in the ocean. It's like, what? What the fuck? And it turns out it's like, a time traveling ship that humans made thousands of years in the future went through a black hole, slingshotted back in time. Spoiled Sphere for everybody who hasn't read Sphere. By the way, Sphere's been out for 25 years and I haven't given away shit compared to the rest of the book. So go read Sphere. Devin is here, my good man. Thank you for joining. Happy Friday. What do we got? It's almost one o'clock. Almost our lunch hour is up, and that means. Tom probably has to go get lunch. I think I had a banana and some blueberries today, which was pretty good. Coffee, bananas, and blueberries, breakfast of champions. What will lunch be today? Probably an egg sandwich. Though I would I would definitely take down a burrito right now. If it's pretty good. So we got our little brains. This is a brainstorming session. Uh, we got our character name. We have some ideas for what kind of equipment he would have. We're going write, to write some notes to ourselves. So a life support uh, iron lung. You know, just writing down some ideas. Like uh, red veins, asymmetric. I mean, this is obvious. The you know flight helm and uh, optical sensor. So this would be like NV, and this is IR, or like thermal or something. Vocoder. Uh, Rebreather is the wrong thing. Air filter. Something like that. Something like that. Uh, and this would just be bump. Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. And then I like I like some of these lines here. The the diagonal line is cool for like breaking up shape. Something like that. Very productive, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's going to be it for now. I probably will do a follow-up. I might work on this uh, more as the day goes on while listening to podcasts because I think this is kind of fun. And I hope you all have an awesome weekend. Devin is saying 
It's interesting that you don't see many see-through visors on helmets in Star Wars. Well, one of the big reasons, and I learned this watching the making of Avatar, James Cameron Avatar, is when you have visors, one of the problems with a slick visor is its reflectivity. And nothing breaks the immersion like seeing the camera crew and the director and everybody behind the camera, all 500 people behind the camera, in the reflection of the visor. So that's a big reason you don't see it very much. In Avatar, they digitally recreated the visors on everybody. All those polymer face shields are digital. That is a crazy amount of work. Crazy amount of work. And it takes a guy like James Cameron, who is just a psychopath when it comes to work ethic, to do something like that and to commission people to make that many visors. But if you watch Avatar today, it even doesn't hold up. Like those visors are kind of, by today's standards, they're kind of obviously CG. One of the amazing things about The Mandalorian is that since they're filming in a LED room called the Vapor or something, the Cloud, I forget what Favreau calls it, but all the reflections are in camera legit. Like his armor is reflecting the LED screens around him, so it's super convincing. It's really it looks really really good. In the past, if you wanted that kind of reflections, you would need to like do it in post, or be on location somewhere, uh, and that's very expensive to do. Very very expensive to do. Yeah, one of the being in Hollywood when I visited a couple times, it made sense to me. Like, oh, the reason like so many studios are here is because all the equipment's here, the cameras, the studio, the backlot sets, the costume departments and the never-ending warehouses of props, costume lenses, lights, power cables, gaffers, tape, ladders, like all the theater stuff that you need to make a movie is in these warehouses in Los Angeles where it doesn't get too humid that stuff starts to rot, doesn't get too cold so the, the equipment doesn't freeze and doesn't rain enough so things get rusty. Like it's just an ideal place to store all this sensitive equipment so that you make it. So the reason going on location to film is so expensive, like it was in the original Star Wars, is they had to bring all that shit and the backup shit with them. It's incredibly expensive. Uh, something also fascinating is the making of Road Warrior. What's the recent Road Warrior called? Fury Road. They were supposed to do this whole thing in like Africa somewhere, and they were going to be shipping like 50 cars. And something went horrifically wrong. They had to back it up, and then they—I think it rained. I think that was the problem. Is like it was supposed to be this butte, like this desert, this like barren, arid desert. And the first time in 25 years, it rained, and the entire desert was beautiful, covered in flowers. So I'm like, oh, this won't work. It's—it's <laughs> it's a utopia instead of a dystopia. Devin said, "Void." Huh? Is that what it's called? The void? Huh? Are you talking about Mando? The making of Mando? Making commandos, commando mandos, dude. Thanks for hopping in. I was just about to ready to wrap it up though. I'm kind of I got I got to do I got I got to get food and take a little break. So thanks for hanging out, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this was inspiring to you, for you on the YouTube's and you on the Facebooks. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you maybe next week. If I don't, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, or Happy Related Hanukkah to my Jewish friends out there. And Kwanzaa for those who celebrate that and everything else I'm missing because I'm sure there's a million holidays I know nothing about. But I hope you're celebrating. It's Friday. It's the weekend. Stock market's kind of up if you got some money in there. Be good to each other. Bye-bye.